It's Maya and I want to welcome you to our service today. We are so happy that you chose to join us and we can't wait for you to hear the sermon. If you want to hear more about who Hub Church is, make sure you head over to our website at www.hubchurchrock.com. Or if you want to see what we are up to, you can follow us on Instagram at hubchurchny. Finally, make sure you subscribe to our page and turn on your notifications so you know when we post our videos. Let's jump into service and we hope to see you in person soon. Bye. Well, we are, we're into our spring cleaning. Anybody started your spring cleaning at home yet? Nobody? I did. I did. Okay. Yep, I have. I started my spring cleaning. I actually picked up something in the garage yesterday. <laughs> So, but we are, we're, we're talking about creating uh, rhythms or Sabbath rhyth rhythms and today creating healthy boundaries. Uh, and how many of you know that there are boundaries that we can have in our lives that, that can be good and some are not necessarily good? Uh, in the book of Genesis, we find a powerful theme running throughout the, the creation story. And for that matter, it's in many places in the scripture, but it's that, that the, the theme of rest. And in, in a world that's constantly, I mean, that glorifies busyness and productivity, God sets an example, example for us by prioritizing rest in our lives and, and establishing, <clears throat> excuse me, the Sabbath day. And last week we talked about what the Sabbath was, and even though it was not something that our salvation was contingent upon, it was an expression of the values of God. It was important to God, and today we're going to explore this topic of creating Sabbath rhythms and discuss how we can prioritize rest by setting boundaries in our lives and taking care of our physical health and focusing on our home life. Uh, it, let's look at Genesis chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3, and it says there, by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy <clears throat> and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on uh, in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 it says remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. In the book of Genesis we learn that that God created the heavens and the earth in 6 days and then rested on the seventh day. And this established a pattern of work and rest. It's not just all play. It's not just all work. It's work and rest. And we're, we're called to follow that pattern. And in Exodus 20, we saw that the truth of the fourth commandment um, specifically commands them to remember and keep the Sabbath holy. And this is reiterated in Deuteronomy. And we saw the penalty for not keeping it was death back in the day. Aren't you glad we're not living in that day right now? You know, uh, let's explore so some of the, the principles that can guide us and help us in creating boundaries. Okay, setting boundaries is, is probably my first point. Setting boundaries. How do we do it? Uh, just as God set a boundary for resting uh, on the seventh day, we have to establish boundaries in our lives. Uh, what are boundaries? So barn boundaries are the limits or guidelines that divide, define acceptable, appropriate, and healthy behavior in relationships, in interactions, and situations. They help us as individuals by establishing how they will be, how we will be treated, and and they also set limits as to what we will tolerate. Boundaries can be physical, they can be emotional or social, and are essential for maintaining healthy relationships and protecting our own needs and boundaries, our own needs. Boundaries are vital to us. And, and I realize that we, we sometimes don't recognize when we are out of whack in this. I've been there many, many times where my boundaries have been crossed over and I just didn't do anything about it. In, in Luke chapter 5 and, and verse 16, it says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. And this is talking about Jesus. 
Jesus created, even while he was working on this earth, he created a priority of prayer, a priority of seeking the Father's face. We must also prioritize time alone with God to recharge, to rejuvenate, and to, to build up your spirit. Imagine a garden that's beautiful, you know, and, and blooming with colorful flowers and, and lush greenery and thriving plants, but it, the garden is constantly trampled on. It's just trampled over, and it's overwatered and neglected. What happens to the garden? Well, you know, the plants will eventually wilt, the, the, the flowers will fade, and the garden will lose its vitality. But setting boundaries in our lives is like taking and putting a fence around the garden. It's putting something that protects and preserves its beauty and its health. And that's just exactly what we need to do in our own lives. Just as the garden needs boundaries to thrive, we also need to establish healthy boundaries in our lives to protect our well-being and to recharge our spirits. Without boundaries, we may find ourselves overwhelmed. We may find ourselves drained and burnt out uh, from constantly saying yes. Anybody ever been there where you didn't know how to say no? I have been there many times where I, you know, I just said yes to everything. And setting boundaries allows us to prioritize what's important to God and us and how to accomplish these, those things. We need to look at these boundaries periodically. Whatever you put in place, you have to assess, are they still valid today? Because we go through seasons of life and things change, don't they? Things change, and all of a sudden, the boundary that you had before isn't good enough. It's, 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 not lax, it's, it's too lax, and so you have to create something more, or maybe it's too stiff, and you need to lighten it up. But the, it's, it's assessing those things, and because seasons of life change, and some things are no longer a priority, and that, but other things become the priority, and that means that we have to change our boundaries and what we accept and what we don't accept. And we need to create space for rest, for reflection, for rejuvenation, and, and that happens mostly through reconnecting with God. You know, I, I realized in my life many times that God, if I don't take the time to set boundaries, God will put them in there for me. You know, I, I've gotten to the point at times where I've been so overwhelmed with doing so much, uh, you know, that all of a sudden something will happen and I will get sick. And you know what happens when you get sick? You can't do anything. And all of a sudden there's a boundary put in place. Nobody wants to be around you when you're sick, right? Usually. And you don't go anywhere. You don't do anything. And all of a sudden you realize man, I was just totally exhausted. That's why I got sick. And, and we, we have to recognize that we have to put things in place to protect our, ourselves, protect ourselves, not just, you know, spirit or physically, but emotionally and spiritually. One thing that I know happens is when we have few or no boundaries, the, the, ex the excess that comes into our lives can stress us out, but it also makes us susceptible to sin. It makes us, the, uh, our awareness of the enemy's of tactics becomes less because we're, we're stressed out or we're, we're overworked or we're, we're not setting any time for us to rejuvenate. And all of a sudden, we don't recognize the tactics that the enemy is already starting to work in our life. And we have to be careful. We have, when we have no margins of rest built in, it's easy for us to get caught up into things, and, and, and the attacks of the enemy can come. By establishing boundaries in, in our relationships, in work activities, uh, we can create a sense of balance, a sense of, of freedom, and peace in our lives. We can say no to things that drain our energy, or people that drain our energy. Anybody have any people that drain your energy? Okay. I've lived long enough to know that there's some people that just are trying, aren't they? Aren't they? 
Or is that just me that experiences that? You, you have some friends, you know, you call them friends, but you can only take them for just so long, right? And then after a while, you're like, okay, I need a break from this person, okay? It, it's, it's recognizing that and, and realizing why it is. Why are those, why are those things, what, what is it that, that, that comes in and causes that stress? Or, you know, we can say no to things that drain our energy. We can. It is a decision. It's a choice. I say no. I am not going to do that. You know, we talked about setting a day as a Sabbath or a day of rest, okay? Uh, I told you that Mondays are usually my day or my Sabbath when I rest. And don't you know, when I said that, of course, everything came in on Monday that I had to do. But I said no. I said no. And, and the truth is we have to realize that we have a choice to say no to things. We sometimes feel the pressure of relationships that make us want to say yes because either we, we feel like we owe somebody something or we feel like the, the pressure of, of just life in general. I, 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 just, I can't say no to that because if I do, then it's going to create this relationship issue. And I understand that. And there are responsibilities that we have. But there's also a responsibility that you have to be healthy yourself and to say no to some things. Boundaries help us to navigate life's challenges with resilience. It also gives you grace. And it also gives you clarity. When you stop and you allow yourself to get rejuvenated by the presence of God, it gives you more clarity about, am I doing what I should be doing? Is this relationship right? Is it wrong? Do I need to, to change my work schedule? Is there something going on? I, I, uh, I realized in my life that when I've said no to things, it was almost like, wow, I'm free. You know, it's just like all of a sudden that weight falls off of you and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't have to do that, you know? Even dealing with, uh, you know, the cross, Jesus had some really things that he encountered and even the truth that he was bringing to mankind. You know, he, he did all these different things throughout his, the, 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 the period of time when he was preaching and teaching. And there, there were healings and there were all kinds of things that Jesus did. You know, pretty much every time Jesus came out into the community, he disrupted something, didn't he? He, he, he would say something that set off the Pharisees or the Sadducees, or he would do something that would mess them up. Oh, he healed that person on, on a Sunday. Oh, my gosh. You know, and, and he would disrupt things. But Jesus took time away so he could hear from the Father as to what he was to do. He took time to know. And, and I believe that, you know, when we go to things that, that are difficult in our life, if we've taken no time with the Father, sometimes we will make the wrong choices. And, and those pressures come upon us. You know, when Jesus had to deal with the cross and with redemption, He found the strength and wisdom to navigate all of the, the things that He had to go through by withdrawing into the wilderness and praying. I'm not saying that you need to go find a cabin in the middle of the woods, okay? You don't. But we do need to find a place to have peaceful conversations with God. Think about it. How are your boundaries? Just think about it for a moment. Do I say yes to everything? Do I let that person trample all over me all the time? I remember when I first got married, you know, um, my wife and I were very, very different in our personalities. I'm, I'm pretty much a pretty laid back person. I don't let things bother me. I kind of just go with things the way they are. And, and Lori's always been one that didn't mind confrontation. And I avoided confrontation. And, and when people would say something to me that was disrespectful or something that was, was wrong, she would look at me and she'd go, you're going to let them say that to you? And I go, oh, that's no big deal. She goes, no, it is a big deal. 
You know, and, and, it, and confronting those things was not something that I wanted to do. But after a while, I started to realize that it was something that I needed to deal with. And, and so she helped me in that. You know, we, we have to have that balance in our life. I have a bunch of people in my life that absolutely love the sense of accomplishment around completing a project, and I get it. I really do. I'm very project-focused, you know? I spent the yesterday changing the brakes and the wheel bearings on my truck, and I was very focused. My wife kept coming out to make sure I wasn't laying underneath the truck dead, you know? Um, but I, I was very focused. I didn't even hear her when she came out. And, and I know other people. My daughter is very focused when it comes to projects. <laughs> she reminds me constantly, you know. But I, th I think it's a good thing to be focused. But sometimes at the expense of other things, we push through to get that thing done when the priority should have shifted a little bit. And, and it's not that the thing wasn't important or, or didn't need to be done, but if I had no boundaries in places to say stop, then something may get missed. Something else may have been the priority. A good example of that is if you remember Jairus' daughter in Scripture, she was dying and, and he came to Jesus and said, can you come and, 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 and pray for my daughter? And as Jesus was on the way, Something interrupted him, didn't it? it? was the woman with the issue of blood. And, and all of a sudden, Jesus stopped and dealt with the new high priority. It became something that was more important than going to Jairus's at that moment. And he dealt with what was going on with this woman with the issue of blood. And then they came and said to him, you know what, Jairus, don't bother him, she's dead. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. And he went on and dealt with the next priority, raising this young girl from the dead and healing her body. And so, we, we, so many times, priorities change for us, don't they? You know, he got back to Jairus' daughter, but the report was that she was dead, and Jesus changed the report, didn't he? The boundary of having, uh, of having some type of rest with the Father gave him the wisdom and the understanding of what was going to be required of him that day. When we take time with the Father, when we take time and, and spend time with God and get in that relationship and understand that God has something to speak to you today for this moment, for this hour, for this day, and, and we grab hold of it, we can find that God can give us rest even in the middle of everything that's going on, and He can direct our footsteps. And that thing that we thought had to get done can be reprioritized to another place or another day or another thing because this is most important today. And Jesus so many times did that. And I, and I think that we have to look at the, the fact that God has a plan for your life. And so many times we get caught up with the schedule. Anybody live by a schedule? I do. You know, I live by a schedule. I have these things that I do. I, I, I'm pretty regimented about it, you know. And, and sometimes we get so caught up in our regiment that we forget that God might have something else that He wants to do through me. And that may mean that something else may become a priority. And, and if I haven't taken the time to rest, to rejuvenate, to hear from the Father, then I may miss what that next step is. That's what our times with God does. It rejuvenates. It prepares us for the challenges of the day. The second thing is physical health of the body. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, it says this, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Resting is essential for your physical well-being. 
It says in Proverbs 3 and verse 24, it says, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. And, and uh, you know, I think of this verse often because when my wife lays down, boom, she's asleep. You know, she'll often ask me, you know, you want to watch a movie? And I'll say, yeah, yeah, sure. What do you want to watch? And it doesn't really matter what she says because I know I only have to watch it for about five minutes because as soon as she sits down, she falls asleep, you know, and it, which is awesome. You know, her sleep is sweet. It is. She sleeps so well, you know, I, as soon as she puts her head down, she is asleep, you know, which is awesome. Consider your body as a temple, though, a sacred dwelling place that houses your spirit and your soul. Just as a temple, as a building like this, this church requires regular maintenance and care, so does your body. You know, your physical health and well-being are essential for your walk with God and for nurturing your relationship with your family. As Christians, it's easy for us to get caught up with the care of our spirit which is absolutely vital, or our soul, which is our mind and our will and our emotions, which is critical. But our bodies somehow can get neglected, especially as Christians. And, and, and I know, you know, prioritizing physical health and taking care of your body is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. And, and it's, but it is a way of honoring and glorifying God by stewarding the precious gift of this life that He's given me, uh, I, I'm honoring God by nourishing your body with healthy food, engaging in regular exercise, getting enough rest. It demonstrates gratitude for the gift of your physical body, and it is a gift. And, and showing reverence for the life that God entrusted you. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. You do realize that. It's amazing to me. You know, in the last week, I've caught myself th three times. This finger, this finger, and this finger. You know what? I don't have any Band-Aids on. Why is that? Because my body healed. It's an amazing thing that God has given us, this physical body. He really has trusted us with enemy, with, with this. And the one thing that we have to recognize is the enemy does not want your, your spirit healthy. He doesn't want your soul healthy either. Why would we think that he wants our physical body healthy? He doesn't. He doesn't. It's, it's really easy to neglect this part of our life. And the fact is, for many Christians, we look at it like I deserve this food even though I know it's not good for me. And I know I may be speaking to somebody here that you're going, oh, stop it. You know, well, I'm talking to myself as well, okay? Uh, you know, I sacrifice for some spiritual accomplishment or, or some other major event in my life, such as a crisis, and, and I'm going to reward myself with this chocolate cake or some other indulgence that probably isn't all that good for me. And, and then it becomes a regular habit of indulging in that something that isn't great for me. And, and I see myself constantly in this situation where, where I have to make choices. And sometimes I do well, and sometimes I don't. You know, I do have a voice in my house that tells me when I'm doing it incorrectly. I won't say her name, but hear me. I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat a piece of chocolate cake. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is you probably shouldn't eat the whole cake. Okay, maintaining good physical health can impact spiritual wellness. When your body is strong and energized and in balance, you are better equipped to engage in spiritual practices such as prayer and worship. A healthy body can enhance your focus, your clarity, and emotional well-being. And you know when you are physically not feeling well, it affects other, other areas of your life. I'm not saying healthy that, that, that Hollywood presents to us. I'm not saying that. 
Hollywood says you got to look a certain way. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doing what is right, eating what's right, exercising a little, and getting yourself on the, in the right place where you should be physically. You know, I'm, you're never going to see my six-pack. I'm carrying a keg, okay? You know, but, but I am saying that you should realize that there are things that we can do to make ourselves healthier, and it is important. Rest is a big part of that. Rest is a big part physically, because when you're physically beat up, guess what? The enemy will go after your spirit then. I know many that have, been ab have abused their bodies physically, and it has, de it has had detrimental effects on them, not only in their, their physical body, but also in their perspective of life, in their spirit life, in their relationships. And I'm not saying you have to be able to run a marathon, but taking care to eat good foods and getting some physical activity is good for us emotionally as well as it helps us sleep better, which is vital to our functioning well. It is stewarding the body that God gave us. And I don't mind telling you that I'm greatly convicted by my message today. Okay? I'm doing things to try and correct that, but I believe that is a part of our life. It's a part of what we need to do to be able to be good, healthy people. Okay, the third thing that I wanted to, to really express to you about boundaries is home life. What is our home life? The Sabbath is not just about resting from work, but it's also about spending quality time with our loved ones. Imagine your home as a sanctuary, a, a place of peace, a place of love and connection where you and your family can retreat and rest and recharge, and that's what your home should be. It should be a place where you want to go to, not a place where there's stress and there's tension. And if there is stress and tension, then you need to work on how do I get rid of this? What do I need to do to bring peace into my home? Just as a sanctuary provides a refuge from the busyness and the noise of the outside world, cultivating a nurturing and a supportive home is vital to establishing healthy, you know, Sabbath rhythms. If you have issues with, with your spouse and, and, and it is constantly there when you, when you come home, you need to work on that. You need to establish some boundaries about how you relate to each other, and you need to establish some boundaries about what are things that we should or shouldn't say to each other. I, I, my wife and I have said this so many times when we've counseled couples that, you know, you say things sometimes to each other that are, are horrible, that you wouldn't even say to a perfect stranger, but you're willing to say it to your spouse. And th those things shouldn't be. You know, like the word says in James, th this well sh out of this well should not come bitter and sweet water. You need to, to establish some boundaries in your home so that you can uh, have the things that bring peace by establishing intentional practices, such as setting aside time for prayer. It is vital to your home that it be a place of prayer. You know, I, 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 my wife and I were counseling a couple this past week, and I asked them, when was the last time that you prayed together? And this, this sullen face they both took said, I don't remember the last time. And, and I said, do you realize that that is vital? I mean, I know it's not necessarily easy for spouses to do that. But you need to create that environment where you can pray together. I, I've said this before, and one of the things that I loved about praying with my wife is I learned so much about her. I found out what was bothering her, what was a concern. I learned what her passions were, and I, and I also learned what her fears were. And so, by praying together, you start to know how to pray for each other and how to hold each other up and how to, to be there in those seasons when your spouse may be going through something. It is taking the time, and it's intentional. It has to be intentional. This will never happen easily. 
It is a rhythm that you have to create. You have to say, yes, we're going to do it. And, and when I say pray together, I don't mean you got to get on your hands and knees and you got to spend, tw- you know, 20 minutes praying about the, all the situations in the world and in your life. Uh, you know what? Three or four minutes at the breakfast table just thanking the Lord for what He's doing in your lives today is a good start. I'm not saying that you should just stay there, but it's a good start. Start to, to, to just thank God for each other. You are a gift to each other as husbands and wives. And, and when we create those atmospheres, it nurtures your soul and, and it strengthens your spiritual connection with God. And as husbands and wives, it also creates an example for your children. Your children see you crying out and praying to God, and it makes a difference. It's not that we stand around singing worship songs in our home. I don't. But I'll tell you this, we have worship music going pretty much all the time. You know, Alexa knows what to play in my house. I don't even have to ask her. I just say, hey, Alexa, play. You know, and, and, and the truth is, is that it, we create an atmosphere of peace, We create an atmosphere of love and kindness toward our children and toward each other. When we start creating that atmosphere and intentionally doing it, it will change things. You may think, well, I'm I'm being hypocritical because I don't feel that way. Guess what? If you do it long enough, you will feel that way. If you worship and have worship music going long enough, all of a sudden worship will become a part of your life. You, you know, I've heard it from so many people in the past. You know what? I, I just don't like coming to worship services at the church. It, it bothers me. Well, then you need to worship on your own for a while so you get used to it. And then when you come to church, you'll be engaged with it because that's the only thing that God gets anything out of in this service. He knows everything I'm going to say, but He's looking for your worship. He's looking for you to worship Him. That's what it's about. That's what we, why we call this a worship service. It's about worshiping the King. In this sanctuary of Sabbath rest, you can slow down. You can, you can disconnect from distractions of the world. Uh, you know, you can focus on deepening your relationship with God and with your family in the home life. By creating space for rest, renewal and reflection in your home, you can experience the true essence of Sabbath, a time of spiritual rejuvenation, connection, and gratitude. Training young ones in the things of the Lord with the context of nurturing home life is essential for their spiritual growth and development. You can't tell them how to do it. You have to show them how to do it. You can only say just so much. We know this, that it's by the example, through regular family worship, discussions about scriptures. You know, we, we pretty much said, you know, you can ask why about anything in our house. Why? Why do we got to do it that way? You know, what, why, why? You, things about church were always questions in our home. Why do they do it that way? Why do we have to do it that way? And the truth is, you should know why they do things a certain way. And if it may be that there isn't real, any real good reason, you know, well, it's just a tradition. That's the way they've done it. You know, I, I used to laugh in, in the previous church I was at, they had a sign in the foyer and, and it said, no sitting during services. And, I, you know, and it was so, so people that were new to the church, they came and they go, we got to stand all the while we're here. You know, it was just they had chairs in the foyer, and they didn't want them sitting in the foyer. They wanted them in the sanctuary. <laughs> but it was, it, you know, sometimes we have to recognize, recognize that our actions speak louder than our words. And, and by creating an atmosphere for people that, that see what we're doing and see how we're, we're living our lives before, before Christ, it makes a huge difference. In essence, developing your home life as a sanctuary, it creates an environment that is healthy for you. When we walk out into the world, there's all kinds of noise, isn't there? There's all kinds of turmoil going on around us. Isn't it nice 
to be able to go home. Just to go home. And if you are in a place where your home isn't that restful place, you need to find it. You need to make that place a restful place because it is invaluable to you, to your spirit, to your soul, to your body. By creating a space of rest, reflection, and worship, it helps us. It strengthens you. It strengthens your spirit, your physical body, and your soul. It is a day to slow down and reconnect with God and our families. In Psalm 127.3, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It's important that we create a home that is inviting to our children. It's inviting to everyone that comes in. When they walk in your home, when people come in visit you, do they sense the presence of peace? Or is it crazy? Is it turmoil? And I'm not saying activity, because my house is active all the time, but it's a peaceful activity. It's, it's the presence of God. So number one, identify areas of our lives where we need to set boundaries. Take a moment today and think about it. Is there an area where boundaries are out of whack in my life, where I need to set some boundaries and take an intentional rest from those things? Secondly, prioritize rest and self-care to your physical body, eating healthy, getting exercise, and getting enough sleep. It makes a difference to your spiritual life. It really does. And three, make time for our families and create intentional moments of rest and peace and connection with them. Jesus modeled all of this throughout Scripture. And, and let's take it to heart that God wants these things established in our lives. The rhythms of Sabbath, the rhythms of rest are vital. They're vital to you. Stand with me today. Maybe that's you. Maybe you found yourself and you, as you heard this, I don't know what the Holy Spirit's speaking to you today. Maybe, it's, maybe there's something that's, you, know, you got it all together and there is balance and you've got boundaries set and, and, and you do things well. Or maybe it's all whacked out. Maybe you are all out of balance. Maybe you, you're, you say yes to everything and your boundaries are all messed up. May I encourage you today, take the time to ask God to show you, is there something that I need to do to reprioritize my time with you, to reconnect and to rejuvenate? I believe that God wants to do that in all of our lives. I believe that he wants to give us those times of rest and refreshing. And he wants to, to make our relationship with him special. Because it is. Bow your heads. Father, I pray today, Lord, that as we deal with each and every one of these areas of our lives, whether it is our our schedule, Lord, that it is all out of whack, Lord, whether the, the boundaries of, of our time are just messed up, God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, help us to, to see where we can say yes and where we can say no. I pray, Lord, that you would help us in, in, in prioritizing the way that we function in our families, in our households. God, help us to make it a priority to create a, a home that's a, a home of peace and a home of joy. And Lord, help us to create that environment that where we can nurture our children and where we can be what you've called us to be to each other as husbands and wives. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us in every aspect of our relationship, Lord, with you. May we find that physical rest 
that we need. That it may be something that restores and rejuvenates us physically. God, I pray for each one that as seasons change in our life, that we would be able to see where priorities need to change and where our boundaries need to be realigned. Help us, God, I pray. In Jesus' name, bless every household and every individual as they look at what's going on. Help them. Help them to see what will bring health into their spirit, soul, and body. We thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, because that will change everything. It will help you to truly have your boundaries in order. If Jesus has never become the Lord, then our priorities are messed up because we've never put God where he's supposed to be. And so may I encourage you today, if you've never asked Jesus Christ, if you're watching online today and you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord, that you would do that. And I'll ask you today, if you've never prayed this prayer, and I'm going to pray a prayer, to pray it along with me, but pray it in faith, believing that God is going to do something in your life. It's not just a prayer. It's a life. It is changing your life. So, Father, right now, I pray right now, can we all join in prayer? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I know I need a savior. And I know I need a savior. And I ask you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. Come into my life. To be my savior. To be my savior. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And help me, God. Help me, God. To reprioritize my life. To reprioritize my life. To set boundaries, oh God. To set boundaries. And to allow you. Allow you. To be my Lord and savior. To be my Lord and savior. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for Lord. taking all my sins upon the cross. Taking all my sins upon And I ask you, Lord, now I ask you, to Lord, be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I invite you to connect with us. We know that God has something for you. We've got some material that would help, help you, but we also know that if you're just nowhere and you have no relationships, relationships help you in your walk with Christ when you're surrounded by Christians. Amen. Amen.